Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining this webinar. It's always a, an exciting moment to, to present what, what's new in Capella. And, and what I'm going to present today is actually a bit more than what, what's new in Capella 1.3, because there have been some uh, add-ons developed in, in 2018. And some of these add-ons are already available with Capella 1.2. So I'm just going to talk about what's new in Capella in general. And I will also give a few uh, perspectives. So the first thing um, that is worth mentioning is that the com Capella community is growing. All of the um, companies, organizations that, that have their logo on, on these two slides have given us their authorization to, to show that, that they're using Capella to, to some extent. We wouldn't have been able to display these slides uh, one year ago. It's a very good indicator of uh, the health of, of Capella and the health of the ecosystem. Just a, a few words about the Capella development. M most of the evolutions uh, that are brought to Capella are actually funded by TADES and they're based on the uh, TADES internal need capture. But we also have public and private bug fixes. See, when you have a bug that there's a bug Zia and, and there's a public bug tracker where you can log your bugs and, and hopefully get them corrected. But there are also evolutions that are funded by external organizations. And 2018, I've seen two or three of them. So once again, it's, it's a good indicator of, of uh, the growing community. So I'm going to start with the core of Capella. Uh, there's a lot of not so small evolutions that have been brought to the to, to the tool. So by Capella Core, I mean what you don't what, what you get when you download Capella. And the first set of evolutions is actually for enhanced navigation in the model and in the workbench. The first one is we have added a relationship between diagrams and model elements. Pretty often when when, when you want to describe uh, or when you want to explain one specific model element, you want to say, okay, this this or this diagram is really, really interesting to uh, understand this particular element. And, and we didn't have, until now, the, the, the means to do that. So this is fixed. So for example, an architecture diagram at system need analysis level. And I have, what I've displayed on this diagram is actually the content of a specific capability of my system. And until now, I was only able to, um, to, to change the name of, of, the, of the diagram. But I'm now able to add something new, which is elements of interest. And by doing that, I can select an element in the, in the mode. And for example, for the system need analysis, I can specify that this diagram is actually really interesting for this capability. And, and now when I come to my uh, model and I see this capability and display the semantic browser, I have the information that this diagram here is particularly relevant for this given element. So. This is something that you will be able to exploit in your documentation generation, for example, and, and so on. The next one is still about diagrams. So we have introduced the, the concept of uh, keyword on, on diagram or, or packages. And by doing that, I can go on a specific diagram and for example, you can see that here in my diagrams, I was um, used to putting some um, tags to specify that the diagram is actually made for building the model. Some others are contextual and, and so on. So instead of just using the labels of, of the diagram, the names of the diagram, I can now uh, take my diagrams so, for example, if I take this diagram, I've specified myself that there is a build package uh, in which it, it will um, be uh, located. And, for example, if I do that, 
and I add uh, uh, build. Oops. The diagram is now automatically located under the build package. So this is true for any diagram in the model. You can just add a tag and then the presentation of the, of the diagram would be uh, adjusted in the project explorer. Next one is we, we've improved the uh, navigation between the different views uh, of Capella, so between diagrams and, and the Project Explorer, for example. Many times we've had the problem that people were trying to navigate from a functional exchange uh, in a diagram to the Project Explorer, but they, they didn't succeed because by default we hide the functional exchanges in the Project Explorer. So now when, when we try to navigate towards an element that is actually hidden in the Project Explorer, there's a, a view that um, proposes to deactivate the filter and, and then display them. So it's a very small thing, but, but pretty useful. Something uh, that has been asked for quite a long time as well is to have a larger uh, scope of uh, selection tools in, in diagrams. So until now, we we're able to select all the shapes or we were able to select uh, all the connectors and so on. But now, when I click on one specific element, I can ask to select all the elements of the same type in the diagram. So if I click on a function, I can select all the functions. If I click on a port of a function, I can get all the ports of the functions and so on. If I click on a function, I can get all the ports of the same function. So we will, I will illustrate that in um, a bit later in, today in, in another context. And about diagram selection, don't forget that the behavior of the selection tool is different when you hit the HALT key or when you select from um, right to left or from left to right. When you select from uh, right to left, anything that you uh, touch will be selected. And when you select from left to right, you have to encompass and com completely the elements to uh, select them. The semantic browser has been completed for several elements. Some queries were missing. So this is the case for uh, associations in DAM classes, in for physical ports, uh, in sequence diagrams, when you were displaying a function, you didn't have the related function appearing in the semantic browser. Um, the same goes for uh, the relationship between exchange items and data structures. And for all the capabilities, with the uh, gen generalization, inclusion, extend, and, and so on, that were not displayed um, historically in, in the semantic browser. So this has been uh, fixed. We also have added something that allows to enhance the, uh, the browsing of a model by allowing to have links towards diagrams within diagrams. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration of, uh, of this, a mission capabilities diagram. And we've seen a bit earlier that I had um, an architecture diagram that was particularly interesting for this uh, capability here. Using this tool, representation link, I can uh, create a node here and select one particular diagram. So here I'm going to select this one. I'm able to put a, a description would help understand the capability. And, and now when I do that, I will be able to navigate on the diagram. And this link is going to be exported in the uh, HTML output and so on. So you, you can clearly improve the, the navigation between uh, between diagrams using this um, this approach. Next, diff merge. There have been a few enhancements uh, of the diff merge. The first thing is um, the default comparison is now oriented, and we have also slightly modified the way things are presented. So, for example, the uh, amount of differences is now uh, displayed differently with a specific color and so on. So I'm, I'm not going to dive into the detail, but there are some subtle, subtle changes in, in the diff merge. We have also added an embedded, an embedded text comparison. So for example, if the review of 
uh, an element is different in two versions of the model. What you were able to see with the previous version was, uh, was what you had at the top here. What we have added is this window that allows to compare the text in, in both versions. And then I'm going to uh, go through a set of evolutions that are uh, more general. We have added the way to have several lifelines in sequence diagrams representing the same actor or the same logical component or physical component. These different lifelines can represent different instances of, of one given element with the limitation that, for example, here on, the, on this diagram, we don't have two functions check data. It's only one that is uh, displayed twice. But still, it allows to um, illustrate some of the uh, dynamic of, uh, of our systems. We have improved in the model validation. We have improved the way uh, data cycles are detected. So this is particularly interesting when you want to generate code. You don't want to have um, dependencies between your packages. Uh, you don't want to have cycles. We have improved the way the, the cycles are detected. And when there are errors, we have improved the way to help the user find where the, what, what are the elements that are involved in, in the cycle. So this is what we see here, for example, um, when we launch the quick fix on the um, cycle detection, it will say, okay, there's one cycle here, and the elements that are included are class three, class five, class six. So it, it's, uh, it's better. And in the next version of, uh, of Capella, so the 1.3.1, there will be a live detection uh, of these uh, cycles. Last year, we introduced the, a tool uh, that was in uh, incubation about th that is dedicated to transferring model elements from a project to a library or from, from a library to another one. Uh, this is still in incubation, but um, a few bug fixes have been uh, done. We, we are hoping that we will be able to finalize that in 2019. Something that came with Capella 1.2.1 in the middle of 2018, but I, I still remind it here. Uh, we are now able to display any property value on any diagram. So much like constraints, we're able to display them in, in diagrams. And this is especially useful when you combine that with the uh, PVMT add-on that I will uh, present a bit later and that just had a, a dedicated webinar. We have introduced something that is a good thing for beginners of, uh, with, with Capella. Quite often the first step is I want to load a, a sample project in my environment so that I can explore what Capella is about. And until now, the, the, the importing a project was uh, a bit cumbersome. So we have now the ability to directly select that we want to import uh, a Capella sample project. So by default in, in Capella, you get the in-flight entertainment system. But you can, the good news is you can define your own sample projects. So by locating them in a specific folder in your Capella installation, uh, they will be proposed in the sample project import. So this, um, this is uh, interesting. When you want to provide your users when with um, domain-specific sample projects, for example. So still in the core of Capella, but, but a, bit more, a bit more significant, we have developed ways to edit elements in tables and visualize elements in tables. So mass editing is not about editing mass, it's about editing a lot of information uh, at once. I'm going to go in the uh, logical architecture, display one specific diagram, and I will use this opportunity to show you the uh, select elements in, in, in the diagram. So for example here, I select one given function, right click, select, and I can select all the elements of the same type in this diagram. So meaning I can select all the functions. With this global selection of all the functions, I can send them to a mass editing view that is going to be filled with all the functions that I have um, selected. So this creates a table with all the properties of all the functions. I can also select uh, 
elements of different kinds. So for example, I can select these uh, component, these logical component and drag them in the view. And now we see that I have less columns because the, the table now only displays the columns that are common between functions and components and the components are here under. And I could put everything here like actors, requirements, whatever. In this mass editing table, I am able to perform a multi-selection, right click, edit the selection and assign a specific value to this group of elements. So now I have changed the status of all these elements to reviewed and for all of them at once. I'm going to do that for a few others. So this one, they are going to be rework necessary and I'm actually going to do that for all of them. Okay, I'm already at the top, edit selection and uh, under rework, for example. So now I have changed uh, all of the all these uh, values uh, pretty easily. I go back on my on my diagram. I, I want again to select all the uh, all the functions, so I select them. And now instead of visualizing them in the mass editing table, I'm going to visualize them in the mass visualization. The objective is different. The objective here is not to edit the values, but, but to better visualize them. So once again, I have the list of all my functions and the information that I find in this mass visualization is actually based on what you would find in the semantic browser. So if I take one given function, I will know that it has a set of, let me find them, well, they have ports, they have statuses, they have incoming or outgoing functional exchanges, they are contributing to some functional chains or capabilities. They are appearing in sequence diagrams and they are allocated to components or to actors and so on. So basically all the queries that you find in the semantic browser, you get them in this mass visualization table where you can also mix different kind of objects. Again, I could have functions and components and I don't know, interfaces and so on. So this is, uh, you, you can export these tables in uh, CSV and, and get them in, uh, in Excel. But you can also sort this table uh, with any of the columns. So for example, now I want to sort all these functions based on the components they are located to. So I just drag and drop the uh, component column. And now here, all my functions are sorted according to my logical components. This is my first uh, level of, of uh, sorting. I can go one step further and say that I also want to sort them with the status. And now for each component, I have all my functions, but they are sorted according to their current statuses. Or I can uh, just, um, I'm not interested by the status, but I want to sort them with the uh, capabilities that the functions are uh, involved, in, involved in. And for some of them, I will have, for example, this one is useful in three capabilities. And for each capability, I can see the functions that are uh, interesting. And once again, you can export that in, in, uh, in CSV. And you can select the columns that you want to see. So here I have kept everything. And the last thing is you can filter what, what, you, what you want to see. So for example, here in the description, if I want to see everything that starts with this, then I will have this information here. So these filters here can be used for, for example, uh, I don't know, something that would be uh, useful, like, okay, this one was rework, rework, under this, okay. If I do rework here, then I only have the rework ones. This was missing in, in, uh, in Capella and this greatly helps exploit the information that we put in the, in the model. The next step is diagrams ergonomics. Uh, this is something that every year we, we have, uh, we work on the, um, on the ergonomics of, of diagram. 
and 2018 was, was not different. We have significantly improved the way hidden elements and pinned elements are managed on diagrams. And let's say that I'm actually not interested in um, visualizing this, uh, this function. So what I would do typically is I would hide them using the uh, hide element here. And maybe I'm not interested in seeing this exchange. So I'm, I'm doing completely random uh, things right now. And I hide them. And until Capella 1.3, the only way to know what was hidden on, on, a, on a diagram was to use these tools here that would list all the elements of the diagram and, and, and specify whether they are uh, visible or not. Now we have something that is much nicer. We have what, what is called the visibility mode. And when you click on this, the elements that are hidden actually become translucid. So here, you can see that there's a display video function, that there are exchanges here, um, that I have hidden exchanges here. And moving an element from being hidden to being visible is as simple as a double click. And if I double click on this element, the same, it, uh, it becomes visible. What is also interesting is that, let's say I'm going back to the standard mode and I'm using a filter, for example, uh, hide functional exchanges. I switch to the visibility mode. I see all the elements that are hidden. So this time the elements are hidden by the, by the filter. And if ever I want to see these, uh, these elements and I double click on one, it will recognize that the reason why this element was hidden was because of a filter and it proposes me to reactivate the filter just to, uh, or to deactivate the filter to, to display all the exchanges. And in that case, this is what I'm going to do. And the same thing for pinned element. As a reminder, pinned element are useful when you uh, perform automated layouts and you don't want to have all the elements move around, um, but only certain ones. If you've done sequence diagrams, you've probably have noticed that sometimes it is pretty difficult to insert uh, exchanges between two, exchange, two, two messages that already exist. So now we have uh, a dedicated tool that allows to expand, to create a gap between any element. So by doing that, if you display the ruler uh, here and you do something like control click or, or something like this and drag it down, then you will have, you will cre automatically create the space and move all the elements uh, that, are, that were after the point where you clicked. And now you have a lot of space to, to insert your uh, exchanges. I think the last one on, on the, uh, for the diagrams, um, we talk about the magic connection uh, creation tool. So this is also better explained with, uh, with the demo. I've initialized an, an architecture diagram, a system architecture diagram, where I have the system, an actor, three functions. And what I would do now, typically would be, I would create functional exchanges between the functions then I would have to come here and create component exchanges or physical links between my uh, system and the, uh, and the actor. So I have to, to uh, be sure about what, which kind of relation I, I want to create. Now there's something new in Capella 1.3 and it is hidden here. It's a generic connection creation tool. So if I click on this, and for example, like I start on a function and I end on a function, it will create a functional exchange because there's no way I could create anything else than a functional exchange between two functions. I create a second one. And now I create something between my system and the actor. So I start here and finish here. And here I have the choice. I can either do a component exchange or a physical link. This time I'm going to do a, a component exchange. And this other time, I'm going to create a physical link. And typically in Capella, you would uh, associate the function parts to the component parts. And this can also be done using the uh, generic creation tool so that you don't have to uh, look in the diagram palette for part allocation uh, tool and, and so on. 
So with one single tool, we are able to create multiple uh, kind of relationships based on the capilla language, uh, while underlying language. And this is uh, this also works for uh, class diagrams and so on. There's been some improvement in the documentation. So we have added uh, the release notes uh, and in particular all the API changes from one version to another one. This is particularly useful when you have to maintain your enrichments to, to Capella. Uh, we have improved the documentation about the diagram ergonomics and all these little things that, that are useful like aligning elements and so on. So this is now in the, uh, in the Capella help, embedded help. And also some embedded documentation about the way to install Capella and add-ons. All this was the core of Capella, the, what you can get when you download uh, the Capella version from, from the website. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about Team for Capella, which is not, as you know, uh, open source. It is a, a commercial tool. And what we've, the improvements uh, that we've brought to Team for Capella, in addition to stability and performance, is fine grain change tracking. And to better illustrate that, I have prepared a video uh, because Team for Capella is not uh, running on, on macOS and I'm currently doing this uh, webinar on, on macOS. So let's see Team for Capella. So I have two users, user one and user two. I display uh, user two now. And the first thing is we can specify, um, we can relate commits to a task manager like MyLean, for example, and we can customize the labels that will be put on, on each commit. Uh, so there's dedicated syntax for that. So a user can specify on which um, task is actually working on. And every time it will save, meaning every time you will do a commit, this, would, this will associate the description, uh, the task, to this, uh, to this commit. So this is what, I, what I'm currently doing here. I'm performing a set of changes on uh, a diagram. And when I save, you will see later, then if I display the, uh, the, the commit history, I, I will see that this was done in the context of task two. MyLean uh, task manager can be related to external task managers such as Jira and, and so on. So back here, we have the two users. On user one, I'm going to display the um, commit history. So this appears in, in, the, in the view that is here. And we see that every commit is associated to a description that is based on the uh, MyLean task. So I'm going to perform a, a few more changes in well user one is going to do a few more changes like refining a function uh, moving a functional exchange creating maybe an internal functional exchange between uh, between these two sub functions so just standard work you can see right now on on the user two that that the um the changes will be reflected when I refresh my the, the diagram, when the user 2 refreshes his diagram. And, and user 2 is uh, doing something else, creating a, a fifth function and relating it to here. But you can see that user 2 is actually working on another task, which is task 3, uh, and so on. So we have two users working in the same time on the same uh, model, but on different tasks. And the commit history gives us uh, indication about uh, which commit was performed for which task. In addition to that, we now are able to manage change sets. So every time I will click or select um, an element or the global repository and so on, I will have the history all the commits that are uh, related to this particular, particular element. So there's a filter uh, to show that who has contributed to one given element. Um, and for each 
of this commit, we are able to compute the change set. What has uh, evolved, what has been added, what has been modified, what has been removed. So every commit uh, is now documented with, uh, with a change set. Here you can see that user1 has done three commits with task1 uh, to, and, and to optimize the view that we provide there's a, a button that allows to merge the consecutive commits, at least for the display. So you can see here in this view that there's only one task one that aggregates all the uh, changes of the atomic uh, commits. So basically what, what is important here is to uh, remember that we are able to associate commits to tasks, uh, associate change sets to commits and to customize the display of these change sets by merging some of them and, and so on. And the last thing that was uh, shown that I was a bit slow with my explanation what, is that we are able to take any commit and perform a diff on, on these two commits uh, to understand what are the, the differences. So this makes team working much um, easier because the um, uh, pretty often you would ask hmm, who did this change on this particular element uh, now you you have the answer now we're moving to add-ons um, I will be quick on, on this one PVMT for property values management tool and diagram styler so basically it's the concept of profiling on top of Capella so the, there was a webinar last month on, on this topic um, the goal of PVMT is to provide end users, not developers, end users, with means to define extensions for, for Capella, so domain specific extensions to, to Capella, to describe colors and, and, and so on, and to uh, instantiate these additional properties and visualize them on, uh, on diagrams. So a, a very quick demo here. So this is the definition of a few extensions. So it's pretty simple. Here, this one is an extension for the safety domain. We just introduced three levels of, of safety, C1, C2, and uncategorized. We associate C1 with a reddish color, C2 with a yellow one. And we specify that these, um, this applies to functions functional chains and, and somehow logical components as well. So basically any of these elements can be associated with a safety category. And when I come on a standard diagram and click on a function, I can see that it now has a safety category attribute or can have a safety category attribute. Here it's not instantiated. In a specific diagram using diagram styler, I'm able to select which attribute I want to uh, visualize. So here it's going to be the safety category. And now we see that a certain amount of functions are red, meaning they are in C1 category, and some are yellow, meaning they are in the C2 category. The same for an architecture diagram. I can do the same, select safety category and display that. And here, for example, we would see that there's a, a C2 function, well, a C1 function that is actually allocated to a C2 component, which is not a good idea. So here, you should probably do something like this. So pretty quickly, you can visualize things that are not correct with your, with your model. Uh, PVMT, I invite you to uh, go and see the complete webinar on, on, on the topic on the uh, YouTube Capella channel. Requirements, this doesn't come with 1.3, it came in the middle of 2018. We, we've uh, developed ways to display requirements coming from uh, Rekif in any Capella diagram. Uh, so this is also available with Capella 1.3. Okay, so nothing really uh, new here. I think we already presented that. 
but something new now it's uh, a filtering add-on a filtering add-on um, has been funded by Ariane Group so it's not something that uh, that Thales has, uh, has funded but nevertheless it's open source um, and the idea is sometimes I, I need to decorate or to annotate my elements with um, with elements like the the different increments or with elements like um, the viewers of the model uh, what, what I want to show them or what I don't want to show them and so on so basically we introduce uh, filtering criteria and we compute results and we are able to um, produce a model that is filtered for one specific set of, of criteria. So I'm going to do a demo of this. So I have uh, two different kind of uh, criteria. The first one is three iterations uh, for my system. So there are some things that will come um, later and something that I'm going to develop in the first iteration. And I have some uh, information about the, um, the audience uh, of the model. So whether it's internal or whether it's something that I want to show to the customer. And I have a set of results. Uh, so for example, a result is going to be uh, a set of criteria uh, that I can select uh, here. So for example, here I have iteration 2 for the internal, iteration 2 for the customer, iteration 3 uh, for internal. I can click on any element and associate them with filtering criteria. So for example, just by uh, selecting which criteria applies to a given element. And of course, as soon as I associate a, a filtering criteria, I have uh, an information that is provided in the model using these uh, small question marks, meaning that there's something that is uh, actually variable. So here, uh, when I select the record inspection data, I can see that it is allocated to iteration 3, meaning that it will only be developed in iteration 3. And these exchanges have been uh, the, var the um, impact on these exchanges has, has been computed, meaning that if I display this one, I didn't explicitly associate a filtering criteria, but it has been computed because it's related to this particular function. Uh, we have something here about this component. So for example, uh, in this uh, model, I don't want to show my customer that I have a specific component for the propulsion. I just want to have a direct link for, for them. So let's see what, what, what this would, uh, what this would um, look like. So we have a dedicated view here. I can say that the diagrams will reflect what I'm displaying here. So let's see iteration 2 for the customer. So when I do that, we don't see anymore the component, the functions, but we see a direct link between this function and the uh, environment. I can change the result that I want to display. I want to see now the uh, internal and I refresh. And now I don't have a direct link between this function and this one, but I have my component and these two functions. But because the function here that has disappeared was only available in iteration three, it is not displayed. If I display the uh, iteration 3 internal, then it will reappear. Okay, that's um, simple stuff. It's um, there's, there's no composition of uh, criteria, no exclusions between these criteria and so on. Um, it's really dedicated to uh, providing a, a basic level of, uh, of, of filtering and I can produce a specific version, for example, here. Uh, I want to produce a version, iteration, iteration 2 for the customer. This is what is going to be uh, uh, created. And this creates a copy of the, of the model. 
with all the elements that were not in these uh, filters uh, removed. So this is the iteration two for the customer. Some of the concepts look like what we would have in a, in a product line engineering management tool, but they, they actually don't really overlap. At least in, in Teles, we, we use both. We use a filtering mechanism and we use product line engineering uh, add-on because the, um, when we do product line engineering, we want much more than, than what this uh, basic filtering add-on is proposing. Quick summary on the add-ons. Um, not all of them are available with Capella 1.3 yet. So HTML generation is available uh, for 1.2 and 1.3. The same for the transition system to subsystem for the requirements. M2Doc, the um, compatibility with 1.3 has uh, started, but it's not yet available. We, we hope that it's going to be uh, really soon. PVMT, so property value management tool, the uh, migration for 1.3 hasn't started yet. Um, hopefully this will come in, in the next uh, weeks or, or, or very next months, but I, well, the sooner the better, but I, I cannot promise anything today. Filtering, uh, the same. We, we're not now working with uh, version 1.2. And the mod states configuration add-on that, that I didn't uh, mention here because it's not really new and we also had uh, a dedicated webinar is also working with Capella 1.2 but not yet with Capella 1.3 so we, we just migrate these add-ons on, on a need basis the next steps what what we are currently working on um, for the one of the next minor version of Capella 1.3 we will have an enhanced way of composing functional chains. Um, until now, we were only able to uh, compose functional chain using um, functional exchanges, but we actually want to do that with multiple exchanges. We want to be able to um, connect them with similar functions. Um, and we also want to graphically visualize the assemblies between functional chains. So if you read the uh, Arcadia book, by Jean-Luc Voirin, you will understand what, what is uh, in the method and what is not supported in the tool yet. So this is going to be fixed. Something that is not confirmed yet, we are hopeful we will ha have that in the following uh, month, first trimester or second trimester, I, I don't know yet. But basically we, we want to add uh, the concept of sequence and, and, and some control in functional chains so associate conditions, uh, operators like AND uh, or OR, and iterations. So basically we want our function, the Arcadia functional chains to look a bit more like uh, EFFBDs. Um, and if we uh, develop that, it will be for a Capella 1.3 something. So we're working on the topic. We, we hope, uh, we are hoping good news pretty soon. This is something that is uh, f that would be funded by uh, another organization than uh, than Tales. And if we manage to do uh, the composition, the assembly of functional chain and the uh, sequence and control, we could end up with something looking like uh, like that. We are also working on the uh, management, improving the management of actors. Until now, we only had some very basic distinction. Things were either in the system or in an actor. We were not able to support something like a piece of software that I have to interact with that is provided by an actor uh, has to run on, on one of, on, of my uh, architecture uh, constituents, one of my hardware, or the opposite. I have a piece of software that I want to run on the... Uh, on an equipment that is actually belonging to, to an actor. So in addition to um, boundaries, we, we need like system versus actors. We, we need something which is internal versus external. So we are currently re working on, on this topic. Uh, hot topics, product line engineering. I, I already uh, talked about it last year, but this is something that is really important for us. So. Uh, Capella is connected to pure variants. Uh, 
and we uh, we recently did a, a tutorial at uh, an Incozy conference on, on this topic. Um, so it, it's pretty powerful. Um, and in the hot topics, we also have continuity with detailed design, something that is asked really often. Estrel Technologies has developed a, a bridge from Capella to uh, SCADE Architect. Uh, it looks like this. So there, there is uh, some documentation uh, uh, online somewhere, so you can contact them. But uh, this exists. Um, in Thales, we've been working on the coupling between Capella and Simulink for detailed design. Right now, it's only a prototype effort. Uh, we are pretty slow with this uh, development. We, we are basically waiting for uh, operational use cases and, and projects that would help us continue developing this bridge, but with a, a, a real operational uh, intent. So if ever you have use cases or you are interested in contributing, just uh, uh, contact us. Hot Topics 2, you've probably seen this year that Capella is now integrated in Siemens Team Center uh, via Obeo System Modeling Workbench. So this looks like this. You have Capella on the left, and inside Capella, you have the Team Center Active Workspace um, that is embedded, where you see the requirements and so on. And, and the, the requirements you see on the Capella diagram are actually the same elements that you have in, in Team Center. So there's a, a big integration work that is currently uh, being uh, performed by, by Obeo. Uh, if you have questions, I invite you to, to ask them. One last thing, I know I've, I've been a, a bit long. We, we call them the power tools. Um, these are a set of Capella add-ons that are not open source, that, that we have been using in, in Thales for a few uh, months, a few years for, for some of them, but, but not more. And we are not considering uh, sharing them. We're not going to share them for free. Uh, we are currently working on, on we're studying which would be the best uh, sharing model. Um, so if you are interested in this kind of tooling, just um, uh, again, contact us. The spirit of these tools is to improve uh, model exploitation and, and model analysis. We're talking about a graphical querying tool so the end user is able to, to write his own query and, and run them here. We are talking about a customizable impact analyzer. So starting from one given element, knowing all the uh, elements that have references and so on, but based on, on queries that are uh, interesting for you. So basically developing queries here can be a uh, exploited in, in an impact analyzer, and then you, you see a, a complete tree of, of, uh, of impact analyses. This doesn't exist in, in, the, in the core of Capella. We're talking about a whiteboard diagram. So this is a, a complete generic diagram where I can drop elements from any Arcadia perspective, um, system functions, local, logical functions, physical functions, and so on, and visualize the links between them, so it's it's a complete general uh, diagram. And for example, if I run an impact analysis on one given element, I can select everything, send it to the whiteboard, and then see the same thing graphically. And we also have the concept of clipboards, uh, much like you would have in uh, in the uh, Office tool suite. Um, you can fill the clipboard with selections, with queries, and so on, perform diff merge on them, uh, drop them in whiteboards, and, and so on. So this is uh, something that, that can be useful. So these tools are intended to work together to um, ease the uh, uh, analysis of, of models. So this is the first thing. And the second one, and last one for today, is something really recent. Uh, that we have been developing in 2019. And this is something that is going to change the way we perform diff merge. Um, today, when you perform a diff merge between two models, you, have in a, you are in a closed environment with the differences, the model on the left, the model on the right, and you have to make choices to, to merge uh, them. Now, what we are able to do is, uh, given a diff, 
we're able to export it and attach it to a target uh, model. And in this target model, we display the, the list of changes as pending changes. So now I am in, in my uh, target model. I have my diagram, the semantic border, the project explorer, every tool that I usually use in, uh, in Capella. And I can take the, uh, the pending changes one by one and decide to apply them, ignore them. And when I do this, uh, when I decide this, I have my whole environment to analyze how it was before, how it would, do, how it would be after, and, and so on. So this is something that really makes uh, the integration of changes um, easier. That's it for today. Uh, sorry, I was a bit long. Um, but well, it's, it's a good news because it means we, uh, you have a lot to play with. <laughs>